In today's lesson, we're going to learn English with Lucy Liu and Uma Thurman in Quentin Tarantino's classic, Kill Bill. Now first off, this scene, just like the movies, is violent, so it might not be for you. If you're sensitive to violence, then I recommend you check out one of our other movie lessons by clicking up here. Otherwise, you have the opportunity in this lesson to learn over 50 advanced words and phrases. And to check your learning at the end, we have a fun quiz prepared for you. Finally, before we jump into the lesson, I want to let you know that if you're new here, every single week we make fun lessons just like this one so that you can learn to understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Timmy said that thanks to our lessons, he can understand how natives really speak, not how like he learned in school. And you can too, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. Now, let's jump into this power-packed lesson with Kill Bill. It was one year after the massacre in El Paso, Texas, that Bill backed his Nippon progeny financially and philosophically in her Shakespearean in magnitude power struggle with the other Yakuza clans over who would rule vice in the city of Tokyo. When the final sword was sheathed, it was Oren Ishii and her powerful posse, the crazy 88 that proved the victor. The pretty lady to Oren's right, who's dressed like she's a villain on Star Trek, is Oren's lawyer, best friend, and second lieutenant. The half-French, half-Japanese Sophie Fatale, another former protege of Bill's. The young girl in the schoolgirl uniform is Oren's personal bodyguard, 17-year-old Gogo Yubari. Gogo may be young, but what she lacks in age, she makes up for in madness. The bald guy in the black suit and the Kato mask is Johnny Moe, the head general of Oren's personal army, the Crazy 88. And just in case you're wondering, how could a half-breed Japanese-Chinese-American become the boss of all bosses in Tokyo, Japan? I'll tell you. The subject of Oren's blood and nationality came up before the council only once, the night Oren assumed power over the crime council. The man who seems bound and determined to break the mood is Boss Tanaka. And what Boss Tanaka thinks is... おい、ちょれ。言って何を言ってんだよ。この組長からダラゴが。田中さん。ダラクトはどういうことです。今日ここで起きてしまった間違いのことだよ。石井の姉さん。何だろうよ。あんたのことだよ。It was one year after the massacre in El Paso, Texas. A massacre is the killing of many people. This can be used as a noun and as a verb, as in this example. Hundreds of civilians were massacred during that time. If you've seen this movie, you know that Beatrix is referring to the massacre that took place during her wedding. As Oren Yishii took part in it, now the bride is looking to get her revenge. That Bill backed his Nippon progeny financially and philosophically in her Shakespearean in magnitude power struggle with the other Yakuza clans. In many of his movies, Tarantino merges multiple analogies in a short sentence. We will dissect this very complex phrase in order to understand its meaning. 
if you back someone, you give support to that person. Example, you refuse to back my ideas. Sometimes we say this as a phrasal verb, back someone up. All right, Phoebes, back me up here, okay? You believe in that karma crap, don't you? <laughs> Listen, by the way, good luck in your next life as a dung beetle. <laughs> Here, however, he's saying that Bill backed his Nippon progeny financially. Back here is being used in the sense of helping someone with money. Nippon is an uncommon way to say Japanese, and progeny means offspring. Even though Oren Ishii is not Bill's daughter, by this phrase you can understand that they had a very close relationship. It is not very common to hear that someone backs you philosophically. By saying this phrase, Beatrix meant that Bill gave Oren Ishii support in every way, as he taught her all sorts of things, mostly related to killing and ruling. That Bill backed his Nippon progeny financially and philosophically in her Shakespearean in magnitude power struggle with the other Yakuza clans. A clan is a group of people that share the same interest. The Yakuza are a powerful Japanese criminal organization. A power struggle is basically a fight to gain leadership. For example, if you watch Game of Thrones, you know the story is about one huge power struggle. Magnitude is the size or importance of something. Example, I don't think you understand the magnitude of the problem. She describes the power struggle Oren had with the Yakuza's as Shakespearean in magnitude. She says this because Shakespeare's plays were often about themes such as ambition, power, and corruption. So what this very complex sentence is saying is that Bill supported Oren's fight to become the boss of all bosses of the Yakuza gang. Over who would rule vice in the city of Tokyo. If you rule, you're the person in charge of something. You could rule any hierarchical organization from a country to a gang. You helped me win the Iron Throne, now help me keep the damn thing. We were meant to rule together. If your sister had lived, we'd have been bound by blood. Vice is a word used to refer to illegal activities such as illegal sex or drugs. Example. The chief of police said he was committed to wipe out vice in the city. There are usually mafia fights around who controls these activities in the cities because they are highly profitable. When the final sword was sheathed. To sheath is to put a sword into a sheath. This is a metaphorical way of saying when the fight was over. Can you guess what's the opposite of to sheath? That is, to take the sword out of the sheath? Hey, do you want to be able to confidently understand your favorite movies in English? Well, our Fluent with Friends course can help you a lot in reaching your goal. In this 48 week course, you will master American pronunciation and learn tons of vocabulary alongside the first two seasons of the TV series Friends. Plus, you get 20 plus page PDF power lessons, vocabulary memorization software, access to our Fluency Circle global community, and so much more. And you can try it for free right now with our three-part masterclass. All you have to do is click up here or down in the description below and you can learn more and sign up for that now. And we look forward to meeting you inside. It was Oren Ishii and her powerful posse, the crazy 88, that proved the victor. A posse is a group of people that have come together for the same purpose. Example, the minister tried to escape from a posse of reporters that were following him. The victor is the winner of a competition, war, election, etc. In other words, a person who is enjoying victory or who is victorious. Example, the victor in the 1960 presidential election was Eisenhower. So, with the aid of her powerful gang, Oren Ishii was the one that won the war between the Tokyo mafias. The pretty lady to Oren's right, who's dressed like she's a villain on Star Trek. In every story, there's a villain. This is the bad person in the story that aims to harm the others. In this movie, we could say that Bill is the main villain of the story, the one that represents the evil side. This phrase is quite humorous because she compares Sophie's clothes to this costume. Is Oren's lawyer, best friend, and second lieutenant. In the armed forces, an officer of middle rank is a lieutenant. Morning, sir! Oh, get your hands down. Do not salute me. There are goddamn snipers all around this area who'd love to grease an officer. 
I'm Lieutenant Dan Taylor. Welcome to Fort Platoon. The half French, half Japanese Sophie Fatale. <laughs> Another former protege of Bill's. Protege is a French word that was incorporated into the English language. It refers to a young person who is helped and taught by an older one. Note that you can see this word spelled like this, or this. While you would use the first one when talking of a man, you would use the second one to refer to a woman. The same happens with the word fiancé, someone you are promised to marry. If it's a woman, it's spelled. In both cases, the pronunciation is the same. Example, the young composer regarded himself as Baron Boim's protege. Former means ex or existing or happening before, but not now. Example, Barack Obama is the former president of the United States. By the way, did you notice the interesting construction of this sentence? Another former protege of Bill's. You probably already know that to form the possessive in English, you add an apostrophe s. However, here, Beatrix also inverted the structure. So instead of saying Bill's protege, she said a protege of Bill's. Example, I'm Anna's friend. I'm a friend of Anna's. He's Mark's professor. He's a professor of Mark's. The young girl in the schoolgirl uniform is Oren's personal bodyguard, 17-year-old Gogo Yubari. A bodyguard is someone who escorts and protects a prominent person. For example, every Hollywood star has their own bodyguard, and every president has to have several around him. Gogo may be young, but what she lacks in age, she makes up for in madness. Lack is a word you'd use to say that you don't have enough of something that is needed or wanted. Example, she just lacks a little confidence. Make up for is a commonly used phrasal verb that means to compensate. Example, he cooked me dinner to make up for being so late the day before. This is actually a common expression. You might lack in something, but make up for it in another thing. Example, what she lacks in experience, she makes up for in enthusiasm. Here's an example of Sheldon using this expression in a ridiculous but funny way. I just want you all to know that I forgive you. This mutiny isn't your fault. It's mine. I haven't earned these bars. <laughs> Although what I lack in leadership, apparently I'm more than make up for in sewing. <laughs> So, Gogo makes up for her young age with madness. Madness is a synonym of craziness. You could use this word to literally refer to the mental illness, but you could also use it to refer to someone's irrational behavior. Let's face it, a well-fed cam is hardly a model of emotional stability. Now, deprive him of food, and stage by stage, it's a slow descent into madness. Sheldon, you need to learn how to drive. This madness has to stop. <laughs> So what Beatrix is saying is that Gogo is an insane young girl. The bald guy in the black suit and the Kato mask is Johnny Moe, the head general of Oren's personal army, the Crazy 88. Yeah. Yeah. And just in case you're wondering, how could a half-breed Japanese-Chinese-American become the boss of all bosses in Tokyo, Japan? I'll tell you. In cases like this one, the word wonder is used to express a wish to know about something. Oh, pardon us, sir. Miss Kingsley is distracted today. Where's your head? I was wondering what it would be like to fly. Why would you spend your time thinking about such an impossible thing? Why wouldn't I? My father said he sometimes believed in six impossible things before breakfast. We use breed to refer to, for example, different types of dogs, like Labradors or Pugs. We could also call one of these a pure breed, meaning that they are 100% that type of dog. So a half breed would be less than 100%, and this might imply that it has less worth. With humans, we don't usually use the word breed, we use the word race. Using words that characterize someone like an animal can be offensive, as is the case here by calling Oren a half-breed to show she is not of pure Japanese descendants, which, in Yakuza society, might make her seem like a less valuable Japanese person. 
the subject of Oren's blood and nationality came up before the council only once. The subject of a conversation is the thing that is being discussed, considered, or studied. In other words, it can also be used as a synonym of topic. Example, he didn't want to discuss that subject. In cases like this one, the phrasal verb come up can be used to refer to a certain topic that is mentioned or talked about in a conversation. Example, what points came up at the meeting? A council is a group of people that gathers for the purpose of giving advice or making decisions. As we can see here, the council refers to the gathering of the bosses of the Japanese mafia, of which Oren is the leader. The night Oren assumed power over the crime council. In this context, to assume means to begin to have responsibility or control over a certain thing. Example, the new president will assume office tomorrow. This phrase refers to the moment where Oren started having control over the council. The man who seems bound and determined to break the mood is Boss Tanaka. The word bound can be used as a synonym of determined. That is, really focused on a certain task on which you concentrate all your strength and attention to. Sometimes these two words are used together in order to emphasize the concept. Example, he was bound and determined to fix the door. If you break the mood, you spoil the atmosphere. Example, she really broke the mood with her sad stories at the party. And what boss Tanaka thinks is... <laughs> An outburst is an explosion, especially of angry feelings. Example, when he heard he was getting fired, he had an outburst of rage. Perversion refers to the changing of something so that it is not what it was or should be. Example, his testimony was clearly a perversion of the truth. Jap is short for Japanese. Boss Tanaka is insulting her because of her mixed roots, Chinese and American. Tanaka is saying that the presence of a Ren perverse the council as a woman with mixed heritage should not be in charge of the Yakuza clans. As your leader, I encourage you from time to time, and always in a respectful manner, to question my logic. If you're unconvinced a particular plan of action I've decided is the wisest, tell me so. But allow me to convince you, and I promise you right here and now, no subject will ever be taboo. Except, of course, the subject that was just under discussion. The price you pay for bringing up either my Chinese or American heritage as a negative is, I collect your fucking head. Just like this fucker here. Now, if any of you sons of bitches got anything else to say, now's the fucking time! I didn't think so. <laughs> As your leader, I encourage you from time to time, and always in a respectful manner, to question my logic. To encourage means to give confidence to someone to do something. Example, I was having doubts about it, but she encouraged me to finish university. The word manner refers to the way in which something is done, or the way in which you behave in a certain occasion. Example, 
when he realized we were not interested in buying anything, his whole manner changed. So if you ask someone to treat you in a respectful manner, you're saying that that person should act towards you in a respectful way. As your leader, I encourage you from time to time, and always in a respectful manner, to question my logic. If you question something, you express your doubts and ask questions about that thing. Example, they question their boss's decisions. Here, logic refers to the way that that person thinks. So if someone questions your logic, that person is unsure about your decisions and good judgment. Oren is saying that she wants her followers to feel free to doubt her choices. If you're unconvinced a particular plan of action I've decided is the wisest, tell me so. To be unconvinced means to not be convinced. That is, not brought to believe or accept something by someone's argument. Example, he was unconvinced the business would succeed. Someone wise has the ability to make good judgments based on a deep understanding and experience of life. So someone wise would probably make the wisest decision. If someone is wise, we might also say she is. But allow me to convince you, and I promise you right here and now, no subject will ever be taboo. The verb allow means to let someone do something. Example, she allows her kids to play video games only on the weekend. However, she's using the phrase allow me to to politely ask for permission. Is it at all possible that you're knitting a pair of pants? <laughs> Oh, oh, no, you're understandably terrified. I do, but you know, allow me to explain. Okay, you know what? I see where this is going. I'm not one of you guys. I'm not a scientist, so just Penny, tell Penny, me Penny, what... everything you're saying is true, but please allow me to continue. Raj, you're out. <laughs> a subject that's taboo is avoided for social or religious reasons. Example, the debate over abortion is taboo in many religious countries. Oren is asking the council to trust her words when she says that she is open to any type of discussion. Except, of course, the subject that was just under discussion. The word except is used when you don't want to include a certain thing. Example, the museum is open every day except Mondays. Also, did you see how they say under discussion? In this case, the preposition under means being. So if something is under discussion, it is being discussed. We collocate this with some other words too. The new school is under construction. The document is under review. The idea is under consideration. Hey, do you love learning English with movies? Well, we have tons of movie lessons in this playlist that you can have fun learning with after you finish this video. The price you pay for bringing up either my Chinese or American heritage as a negative is. If you bring up a certain topic during a discussion, you start talking about that particular subject. Well, you know what I like to do when I'm forced to speak with those beneath my intellectual station? <laughs> I bring up an interesting topic, you know, like the difference between Spider-Man and spiders. <laughs> Heritage can refer to practices or characteristics that are passed down through the years, from one generation to the next. It can also refer to a person's ethnic or cultural background. Example, the organization aims to preserve the cultural heritage of the country. In this scene, Boss Tanaka was killed because he criticized Oren's roots. So she is saying that anyone who questions her because of that one topic will face the same fate. Let's listen again to the way that Oren says this phrase. The price you pay for bringing up either my Chinese or American heritage as a negative is for bringing up either my here we have a good example of connected speech. This is the way that natives link their words together. Up is a preposition, which is an example of a function word. These words reduce and connect to content words, like bring or other function words, like the ing in bringing. So instead of saying bringing up, Oren says bring up. Natives do this all the time. Let's hear some other examples. Grow up, if you still feel raw about it, I'll be waiting. It's a goddamn massacre, Pop. They wiped out the whole wedding party execution style. 
Baby, now you can't come in here. There's broken glass everywhere and you could cut yourself. I collect your fucking head. To collect means to gather or accumulate objects. Example, he collects stamps. Fuck is an interesting word of the English vocabulary because it has a wide range of meanings and it can be used in many different ways. In cases like this one, it is used to emphasize a statement, especially an angry one. Example, what a fucking waste of time. As you can see here, Oren started her monologue talking in a very peaceful and polite way and ends up shouting and swearing. Just like this fucker here. As I've mentioned previously, the word fuck has several variants. This one, fucker, refers to an unpleasant or stupid person. Okay, we got this. Ho! Oh, you don't send a boy to do a man's job. We brought him here. We'll take care of it. Yeah, you know what? Have at him. Yeah, you have a safe word in case things go bad? <laughs> That's good. Come on, Flag, let's show these fuckers how it's done. Sure, you got it, boss. Hasta la vista, baby. Terminator 2. Remember? Now, if any of you sons of bitches got anything else to say, now's the fucking time! I didn't think so. To adjourn means to temporarily end a meeting. Example, they adjourned the meeting until the following Thursday. It was one year after the massacre in El Paso, Texas, that Bill backed his Nippon progeny financially and philosophically in her Shakespearean in magnitude power struggle with the other Yakuza clans over who would rule vice in the city of Tokyo. When the final sword was sheathed, It was Oren Ishii and her powerful posse, the crazy 88, that proved the victor. The pretty lady to Oren's right, who's dressed like she's a villain on Star Trek, is Oren's lawyer, best friend, and second lieutenant. The half French, half Japanese Sophie Fatale. Another former protege of Bill. The young girl in the schoolgirl uniform is Oren's personal bodyguard, 17-year-old Gogo Yubari. Gogo may be young, but what she lacks in age, she makes up for in madness. The bald guy in the black suit and the Kato mask is Johnny Moe, the head general of Oren's personal army, the Crazy 88. And just in case you're wondering, how could a half-breed Japanese-Chinese-American become the boss of all bosses in Tokyo, Japan? I'll tell you. The subject of Oren's blood and nationality came up before the council only once, the night Oren assumed power over the crime council. The man who seems bound and determined to break the mood is Boss Tanaka. And what Boss Tanaka thinks is... おい、ちょめ。言って何を言ってんだよ。この組長からダラクが。田中さん。ダラクとはどういうことです。今日ここで起きてしまった間違いのことだよ。
As your leader, I encourage you from time to time, and always in a respectful manner, to question my logic. If you're unconvinced a particular plan of action I've decided is the wisest, tell me so. But allow me to convince you, and I promise you right here and now, no subject will ever be taboo. Except, of course, the subject that was just under discussion. The price you pay for bringing up either my Chinese or American heritage as a negative is, I collect your fucking head. Just like this fucker here. Now, if any of you sons of bitches got anything else to say, now's the fucking time! I didn't think so. All right, I hope you had a ton of fun learning today with Kill Bill. If you enjoyed this lesson, let us and YouTube know that you want more videos like this by hitting that like button below. And you're off to a great start, so be sure to continue learning with this other lesson we made with Quentin Tarantino's newest movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Oh yeah!